Hi, I'm Jason with Tormach. Today we're going to talk about how to update your controller to Pathpilot 2.0. So the 2.0 update will ship to you as a USB drive and in with the package will come an orange card with a link and a web address to download the full instructions. Please download those and take a look at them before you do the install. The first thing we need to verify is to make sure that we're at least on version 1.9. Our controllers on the most recent version of 1.9.13. So the first thing we're going to want to do is back up all of our files. So to do that, we can do an admin settings backup. So we'll jump to our main screen. We'll go to the MDI line and we'll just type in admin space settings backup. We need to space that apart. And what I did was I made a, I typoed it. Um, I forgot the G in settings. So what happens is Pathpilot will show us the list of admin commands that are available. So if you do make the mistake or you type it wrong, it'll come in here and show you the list. So we can see that there's settings backup in the list. Um, so if I go back to the MDI line, if I hit the up arrow, I get the previous command that I typed in. So I can just add the G in. So what this is going to do is it's going to back up all the system files for the machine. So we'll just go ahead, hit save here. And then when we jump to our file tab, it's going to save this right in the root directory. So here's our file. We need to make sure and copy this to a USB drive. So we already have a USB drive installed in the controller. So we'll take our settings backup file. We'll copy to USB. We also need to copy any other files that we want to or any files that we want to save, we also need to transfer over. So there's a list of files that you can see here that automatically get backed up. We need to take any additional files that we want to keep. So on this controller, I want to keep quite a few of these different project files that we have in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just select all of these. Um, got just a bunch of random programs on this machine that I don't want to have to remake. So I'll grab the files that I want. I'm just going to say copy to USB. And I selected quite a few at one time here, so it's going to take a second for it to do that. So you can see we can transfer more than one file time. It put them all over to my USB drive. So now we have everything that I want to save from this machine before we do the update. So I'll go ahead and eject my USB drive and remove it from the controller. So at this point, we can go ahead and install the update USB drive that you received into the controller. You can see a little light comes on saying that the drive has been recognized. So we'll go ahead and reboot the controller. We'll just exit out of Pathpilot. And while we're booting, we're going to need to press F10, 11, and 12. Depending on which controller you have and which motherboard, the key varies. So if you just go ahead and hit all three um, in sequential order, you should get to the boot menu. So we'll go ahead and reboot the controller here. And as it's booting, I'm just going to go F10, 11, 12. Just kind of repeat this pattern until it hits the boot menu. If you know which button you need for your specific controller, you can go ahead and press that. So here's the boot menu. Not all installs will say general UDIS. Depending on when you got your version of Pathfinder 2.0, the name may change. We just want to select an option that doesn't have a DVD, a WDC, or a UEFI preface on it. If you don't see one of these options, you'll need to reboot your controller. So we'll select the general UDIS 5.0. We'll press enter. Now the controller is going to start re-imaging the hard drive. So we need to tell it which image we want to use. You can see that it automatically selects the appropriate one for us. Now we just need to wait for the controller to re-image the hard drive. Once you get to the license agreement page, we can go ahead and press yes. We agree to the license terms. It's just letting us know that it's going to rewrite the entire hard drive. So this is why we really want to make sure you guys have all your files backed up beforehand because it will wipe the whole hard drive in this process. So let's go ahead and say OK. And then we'll come down and we'll press start. And at this point, we're now re-imaging the hard drive. So we just need to wait patiently while it goes through this process. All right. 
So the controller finished imaging the hard drive, so now we can remove the USB drive and go ahead and click OK and let the system reboot. And this is going to be a fresh install of PathPilot, so it's going to boot up to the configuration screen like it did when you first purchased your machine. So we'll have to go through quickly and just tell the controller what machine it's hooked up to. So we've reached the license agreement page here for PathPilot. We'll go ahead and agree to the terms. Now we need to select which machine we have. This controller is used on a PC and C440, so we'll select that from the list. You can see it's going to flash the Mesa firmware. And once that's finished up, we can just go ahead and say OK. So now it says it's safe to go ahead and reboot your controller. It's really important to fully reboot the controller. We don't want to just cycle the power tool. We want to fully shut it down to make sure that the Mesa card gets flashed properly. Um, to do this on a 440, since the power is tied in a little differently, we need to make sure that we just hold the power button on the controller to fully shut it down. On a 770, 1100, or, our, or our lathe, you can just go ahead and hit the main disconnect on the machine, and that will cycle the controller power. So now we're booted back up into PathPilot, we can go ahead and restore all of our old files. So we can insert our USB drive back into the controller. We can go back to our MDI tab here. We can go admin, settings, restore. Go ahead and press enter. I'm going to click on USB file. Do we? I put it in the 440 backup folder. And we will select our zip file. And we'll go ahead and say open. It's just telling us to e-stop the machine. Our machine is in the e-stop state already, so we'll go ahead and say OK. So we'll just go ahead and power the machine up here, and we'll verify that our settings showed up. So let me turn the machine on quick. Let's go ahead and take it out of e-stop. Let's get it fired up and pulled out of reset here. So we'll clear all of our status messages. Now if we look, we go back to our offsets page, you can see all of our tool offsets that we had previously are, have been restored to the machine. So at this point we still need to copy over our files that we had. So we can come back in here, I'll go back to my 440 backup folder, and I can just grab all of the files that I have. I can just select them all, and I can say copy from USB. I can wait patiently while it copies them all over and everything's been restored to your machine. So now you should be back to right where you were when you started off, um, just with the new 2.0 version of PathPilot. The last step we're going to show is how to set the internet up. This will give PathPilot the ability to go out and find new updates when they're available. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and come to our status page. We're going to click on the internet button, and it's going to pop open our network configurator. We can select our network that we're going to use. We're going to select Tormach West here. We're going to connect to it. And then we'll go ahead and enter your network password. So we're going to type in our password and we'll hit connect. So you can see once we get connected, our auto connect says enabled, so it'll automatically log in when it sees this network. We'll go ahead and close this window. Then we'll click the update button. And we can say check online daily for updates. What this will do is just go out and check every day to make sure you're on the latest version of PathPilot. So we can go ahead and we can say just check online and it did a quick check and it says where I have the most current version available right now. So we could go ahead and close this window if we're finished. If we want to update from a USB drive like we used to, we can go ahead and select browse and then it'll load from a USB drive like it used to. Thanks for watching. You can check out our YouTube videos here and please subscribe to our YouTube channel here.